Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome on this uh, beautiful wet day. Uh, it's wet and windy, and glad to see uh, so many of you here. Uh, this is our third Lenten luncheon. We are uh, halfway point for uh, this year. There are three more to come. And uh, I will ask Pastor Jeff to uh, come and say grace. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome. Um, um, I'm so glad you're here that you fought the hurricane, today's hurricane, to be here. Um, I, I grew up in Florida, so I know what that feels like, but not when it's cold. So to have those kind of um, gusts when it's that cold. But I'm really glad that you're here and that, that you're safe and that I hope that you go home safe. So let's say um, a word of grace. Gracious God, thank you for today, this blustery, windy, wet day. Um, we ask uh, you, you to guide us as we listen today. We open our hearts to what is being said and that we um, not only hear, but we listen. Bless those who could not be here with us today. Keep us safe in this weather as we depart this place. And bless the food that we have eaten, um, the hands and the hearts that have prepared it for us. All this we ask through your name. Amen. Amen. I know some of you are probably uh, waiting for a joke, so I do have one for you today, and these uh, two kids are on the sidewalk talking, and one kid says to the other, hey, I went to a wedding the other day, and do you know you can get married 16 times? And one kid says, what do you mean 16 times? Well, yeah, the minister said, for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse. No mathematicians here. <laughs> okay. Uh, next week, uh, you get to uh, listen to me and uh, to Nicole Casper, the archivist uh, from Stonehill College. We are uh, going to talk to you about one of uh, Brockton's three greatest uh, tragedies the tragedy at Moosehead Lake in which nine prominent Brocktonians along with their main guide drowned. Uh, May 13th will be the 90th anniversary of uh, that event and Nicole and I have a book coming out on May 5th uh, about that and uh, the Historical Society will be dedicating a uh, memorial to uh, those lost, to the uh, survivor and to all who aided in the uh, search and rescue. Uh, so we hope uh, that you will be here for that. And uh, as we are in March, uh, Moosehead was in May, but Brockton's other two greatest disasters occurred in the month of uh, March, the Grover disaster on March 10th, uh, March uh, 20 something in 1905, and next Saturday, the 72nd anniversary of the uh, Strand Theater uh, tragedy. So that's uh, coming up next week, and uh, then we have two more after that. But today we uh, are honored to have with us our new Ward 4 counselor, Susan Nicastro. Uh, first Lutheran sits in uh, Ward 4, and it's the first time in many years that we've had a uh, new counselor. Susan came into office uh, succeeding uh, the retiring Paul Studensky who was a great friend of this congregation over the years that he was both police chief and uh, counselor. Uh, Susan's a 28-year resident of Ward 4. She's married to a lifelong Ward 4 resident, John Toig, and mother of two young adult sons. In 2009, she was appointed to serve a five-year term on the Brockton Planning Board by Mayor Harrington, and she served for two years on the Zoning Board of Appeals. She's a graduate of Marywood College in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and the New England School of Law in Boston. Her 30-plus year law practice specializes in real estate and business. She's past president and longtime member of the board of directors of the Charity Guild, op operator of a thrift store and food pantry up the street here in uh, 
Brockton for her efforts on behalf of the Guild. She was named Woman of the Year by the Brockton Commission on Women's Issues. She's also a member of the Brockton Garden Club and the Brockton Library Foundation and past member of the Board of Directors of Joanna's Place and has been active in her neighborhood Crime Watch. And on the Council, she serves on the subcommittees of Finance, Accounts, and Real Estate. So please join me in welcoming Councillor Nicastro. Good afternoon. I want to thank Pastor Jeff Johnson, Mr. Jim Benson, and First Evangelical Lutheran Church for hosting me today. And I have to thank all the ladies in the back because wasn't it a delicious lunch? And boy, you can't beat the desserts. I'm, I'm feeling a little guilty having dessert on a Friday in Lent. Don't tell anyone. Well, uh, you know, as I stand here today, the brand new Ward 4 City Councilor, I just wanted to reflect a minute and explain to you what goes into the person who sit, who's standing here today. And Mr. Benson mentioned that I'm a graduate of Marywood College in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I'm a native of northeastern Pennsylvania, and specifically the Scranton area. And if you were to look at Pennsylvania, which is shaped like a rectangle, I'm from the upper right corner. A beautiful area. And Scranton is a Rust Belt city. It was formerly known as the anthracite capital of the United States, anthracite coal. My, my Irish grandfather was a coal miner, and he did die of black lung. Um, my part of the world, growing up, Scranton, peaked at about the same time that Brockton peaked at the, at the turn of the 20th century. And that puts, makes Brockton rather familiar to me as I've lived here these last 28 years. And Scranton has con continued, unfortunately, to decline. I'm in touch with all my grade school and high school friends through the magic of Facebook. It's really a shame about Scranton. I think we're going to be able to do things in Brockton that I don't see happening in Scranton yet. But anyway, I'm from a middle class family. My father was a lumberyard sales representative. My mother was a homemaker for many years, and later she was a secretary in the Human Resources Department at the University of Scranton. Because of her job, she didn't make much money, but she got a tremendous benefit. She was able to put my brother through the University of Scranton for free. She got free tuition for my brother. And she used to say, she said it on her deathbed a few years ago, her greatest accomplishment was putting my brother through college. I don't think she was sure he would get through it otherwise. But anyway, I'm a baby boomer. I grew up in the 1960s and the 1970s when we were told we could be anything and we could do anything. And Sometimes I feel that, and sometimes I'm feeling kind of tired. But anyway, I'm the first of my grandparents' grandchildren to go to college and get an advanced degree. And I majored in human ecology, which is home economics, at Marywood College. And later I went to law school in Boston. When I started law school, I wanted to be Ralph Nader. I wanted to be a consumer specialist and find products that don't work for people, and by the time I got out of law school, everyone was just consumerist and buying stuff, and so I became a real estate attorney. And, and I love real estate because there's a lot of background and history to it. I love research. I think I'm a closet librarian and, and research person. I would have been very happy working in a library, just doing research and learning about other things and places. Um, I met my husband a Brockton native at, a, at our, the second law firm I worked at. And as you know, he, he's, a, he's a lifer here. And his parents had deep roots in the shoe industry. And it was from his parents, Eddie and Betty Tuig, who raised their family on Woodside Avenue off Copeland Street, that I learned, I first learned about Brockton. They very much loved Brockton, as does my husband. I learned all about the shoe industry and about Brockton's great years. Um, this is a mighty city. This, this ha city has mighty history. And I'm hoping that it has a mighty future as well. And I'm hoping, as Ward 4 Counselor, that I will contribute to a positive future for Brockton. Um, we're raising two sons, Edward and Benjamin Tuig. Edward has just graduated from college in, in May. Anyone who says that a philosophy major can't get a job, my Edward has a full-time job and uh, is living on his own in, in, in Boston. He's living the life in Boston. 
And my younger son, Benjamin, is a junior at Boston College, and he's living the life off campus in a house with eight of his closest friends. And you know, I've finally figured out why God sent me two boys. These boys delight in telling me how wrong I am and in constantly challenging everything that I say. We have a text group, the four of us, my husband, the boys, and I, and occasionally they'll write to each other on the text group and you'll see something like, she was right again, I really wanted her to be wrong on this one. <laughs> yeah, But I think, in retrospect, I think God was doing the right thing. He was preparing me for public office. Because I have to tell you, there's lots of people challenging me in public office, and I've only been doing this for two months. So that's my background. That's where I come from and, and, and how I became the person I am. So why did I run for Ward 4 City Councilor? Well, all these years that I've lived in Brockton, these 28 years, I've been a serial volunteer in my children's schools at the Charity Guild, most recently at the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. You know, about 10 or 12 years ago, when the South Side was threatened with a proposed power plant being constructed on Oak Hill Way, my neighbors came to me and said, we really need you to get involved. We want to oppose this. We don't think this is good for our side of Brockton. And I have to tell you, I learned so much. I couldn't understand how the they behind this proposed power plant could think it was okay to build something like this in the middle of a community with lots of housing and children's schools and nursing homes and, a, and an elderly high rise so close near it. I, I just didn't get it. This involvement really opened my eyes to how some communities get targeted for bad stuff and the steamroll of support for these projects that, that can come out of local and state government unless residents rise up and act up and advocate for themselves. And I learned so much from many people, most especially a member of your congregation here, Virginia Jepson, who remains a good friend of mine and who I actually spoke with last night. Um, I'm very proud that as the result of the efforts of many people, the power plant project has not been built. Now, it's not dead. You might be hearing from people that it's dead. I heard the mayor say the other day that it's dead. It is not dead. It's dormant. It's, it's not dead. And until it's dead, we, we really won't rest. And what we need to do at this point is we need to find a good use for the land that was proposed to have the power plant built on it so that we can finally lay it to rest and we can get something down there that most of us agree upon is a good use for that land. Um, so beginning with the power plant, I began, I began paying closer attention to what was happening in Brockton. We've always received the Boston Globe and the Brockton Enterprise newspapers. We, my husband and I love reading the newspaper. And so I started reading it more closely, and I also started reading the sexy stuff in the legal notices. That's where all the good stuff is. And I started wondering, why does all this controversial stuff, this, um, these projects that are harmful to other people, the stuff that other communities, maybe wealthier communities, don't want, why do, why do they keep seeming to land in Brockton? And why aren't we climbing out of the slump that we went into after the shoe industry? you know, declined and eventually closed its doors here in Massachusetts and in New England. Well, nine years ago, Mayor Harrington appointed me to a five-year term on the Brockton Planning Board. During those five years, I also spent two years on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. And in these roles, I was able to use my legal skills while, and my background while learning about how the city works, how city hall works, and, and how we're using our land in Brockton. Um, and so after a few years of doing that and thinking and being kicked off the planning board by the current mayor, I ran for Ward 4 City Councilor. I wanted to use my training, my experience, and my skills to make Ward 4 and the city a better place to live. Now some people thought, they were kind of surprised that I did this. Like, why would you want to spend this time when your boys are finally older doing this? I, I just have a feeling that these talents that I have can be used to make Brockton better. And I have to tell you, I don't have an ulterior motive. I'm not looking to get a better job. 
I'm not looking to buy a property and make a big business there or subdivide it. I just truly want to do something to make Brockton better. And I think we can, I really do. Um, I should tell you, the city council appealed to me because it's a very appropriate next step after a board or a commission. Um, the city council is the legislative branch of our government. It makes laws, which are called ordinances. It reviews and, and approves the city budget and appointments by the mayor. It provides important checks and balances on the executive branch, which of course is the mayor. And I like that, I, I really like that. And in, in these two months, I've just learned so much more about the city and what is currently pending in the city. So what are my goals? as a Ward 4 city councilor. Well, I ran my campaign the old-fashioned way. I lost six pounds this time running for office because I was out often after work and in the evenings visiting neighborhoods, knocking on doors, showing up at meetings. Um, I wasn't a whirling dervish, but I was moving fast. I wanted to meet residents. I wanted to listen to their concerns. I wanted to share some thoughts that I have. And I wanted to ask the question, what do you like about our city? What do you dislike about our city and also about our neighborhood? And the answers I got form the first of my goals. And that is to improve our quality of life in Ward 4. And I've already had some small victories in only two months. So what am I working on? Well, I'm working on the condition and the cleanliness of our roads and our sidewalks. And and that's been a wonderful, interesting thing. I've had potholes fixed. I've put bumpy roads on lists to be paved. Unfortunately, I can't get as many roads paved as we need paved in Ward 4, but I'm working on it. And I'm keeping a list of what doesn't get done this year so I can ask again next year. I'm working on street lights. Coincidentally, Brockton right now, it wraps up in March, has a program where they're replacing all the existing street lights with um, those really bright street lights, not halogen, LED. LED lights, yes, that's right. I've gotten a number of street lights and streets re replaced with, with these LED lights, and they're bright, and the neighbors love them. And they feel safer, and, and the lights go a long way in giving us the perception of safety because we can see. I haven't been able to get them for everyone, but I'm trying really hard. Um, call me if, you, if you're interested if we've skipped your street. I'm, I'm working on public safety and crime and drug dealing, both the perceptions of crime in our neighborhoods and also what's actually happening in our neighborhoods. And so I'm slowly getting to know some of the players at the Brockton Police Department and they've all been very kind to me and very responsive to my requests. And I'm working on enforcement of our city ordinances and primarily that comes down to code enforcement, our health codes, cleanliness, uh, debris in people's yards and on our streets, which is especially noticeable after the snow melts. I'm working on uh, licensed in, uh, companies like car repair shops, making sure that they're sticking within the parameters of their licenses. And I'm following up on the ones that have been complained about, just letting them know, I want their businesses to succeed, I really do but it's got to succeed within the parameters of their license. So if the license says you can have 13 cars in your yard and you have 24, that's a problem. Um, and you can't park those 17 cars on the side streets and across the street in the field from your, your business. That's not something that works for us. That's too much. Um, I'm, I'm getting good results so far. These are kind of, of small victories easy wins perhaps in some instances, but it's making our citizens feel like someone is paying attention. And that's very gratifying to me because I am. Now I should tell you, I believe diversity is a great strength of our city. And I'm determined to make everyone in Ward 4 feel cared about and included. And I'm learning more about the different cultures of people who live in Ward 4. And and I want everyone to feel at home, and I want everyone to play by the same rules. Um, and I'm putting a special focus on helping seniors and, and the disabled who are living in Ward 4. Some of you might know, because I did talk about it on the campaign trail, for the last six years of her life, my mom lived with me. We sold our house in Pennsylvania, and she came up to live with me. She had dementia. 
And it was through support systems in Brockton and at an, uh, an Alzheimer's adult day and, and uh, some other people I know that I was able to keep her living with me until just about the end of her life. And I know that the best thing for people as we grow older is to age in place, to stay in our homes as long as possible. But in many instances, we need help. And so I'm just getting into that, learning about how we can do more for our seniors. They're the most reliable voters, and yet they'll say to me, but you forget about us the other, the other years when you're not running for office. And I'm determined to not let that be so in Ward 4. Um, so that my first goal, our quality of life. And this will continue on in my time as Ward 4 counselor. Well, my second goal is more ambitious and more long-term, and that is to stimulate economic development in Ward 4, resulting in new jobs, paying residents a living wage. Last fall, I participated in the city planning office's visioning se sessions, which sought community input on redeveloping the Main Street corridor of Campello. From down here, East Nelson Street, right south to the West Bridgewater line. As many of you know, this corridor is lined with empty buildings, empty lots, and fewer successful b businesses and restaurants than we need. It's a broken area. It's a broken area. It's no longer our auto mile, unfortunately. And you know, I've given a lot of thought to this, as has my husband. And somebody once said, maybe it's not always about trying to fix something that's broken. Maybe it's about starting over and creating something better. So listening to the planning office in these visioning sessions, trying to imagine what can go there, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm staying in touch with the city planner and I'm attending lots of meetings, especially those at Metro South Chamber of Commerce. And I'm also, I'm, I'm actually starting to read the Wall Street Journal, trying to figure out what would be a good fit in South Brockton along Main Street? What kind of businesses do we need? Well, on Tuesday, I heard of something else that might help us. Mayor Carpenter spoke at the Campello Business Association meeting, and he said there's a new state program that will identify and create something called Opportunity Zones throughout Massachusetts, and their goal is to stimulate new business development. And as it happens, about 80% of Brockton falls into the program criteria. And so the city is going to submit several areas for consideration by the state to be called Opportunity Zones, and one of them is Campello. So this is a new tool for investing that holds great promise for the city of Brockton, and I'm following up on that. I'm really interested. We have to submit our plans by mid-March, and I'm just going to be in there swinging to make sure that Campello gets, um, gets on that list. I'm also fortunate that State Representative Michelle Dubois, who represents some of Ward 4, she's been including me in brainstorming sessions to create a proposal. The state is going to fund, they've got some big bonds, millions of dollars, that they want to float to create life science centers in Massachusetts. And Michelle is going to submit a proposal to invest in Brockton for life sciences, education, training, and manufacturing. And I loved being at the table to keep saying, Campello would be a good place. This is a good idea for us. Think of us. So it's going to take some time. But it took a while for this corridor to, to get to look the way that it does now. It's only a two-year term, and this will take far longer than two years. But I'm beginning, and I, I won't let up. And, and anybody who knows me will tell you, I'm sassy, I do lots of research, and I don't take no for an answer very easily. Okay. So in closing, Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Well, you know, like every other city, Brockton is dynamic. It's a dynamic body that changes. Of course, in your lifetimes, you've seen Brockton change, right? Um, the issues facing Brockton are not new, and they result from several generations, not even a single generation, several generations of decisions or failures to make decisions. I'm observing Lent this year with daily prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. The prayer part is easy. I'm up every morning at 5.30 to have breakfast with my husband before he starts the commute into Boston. And after he leaves, I light a candle and I say my prayers. 
I'm asking God to help me with this, this Ward 4 City Councilor job. And I'm happy to have this meaningful work. It's so important to have meaningful work in your life. I like doing this much better than I like being a real estate attorney, to tell you the truth. God help those people at City Hall, right? <laughs> so as for almsgiving, every week I'm donating whatever I can to a charity that serves people in Brockton. I, I want to f help Brockton. My giving is focused on Brockton right now. Now, the fasting, that's a tough one for me. It's not easy for me to give up sweets and foods that I like so much. So I decided that I'm going to fast on pe pessimism. I'm, I'm trying to fast on swearing. I'm trying to give up. That's a tough one, too, especially on city council days. But I'm trying to give up having anything but a positive attitude because I really like this job and I'm hopeful that I can improve things.